Comet ZTF makes its close approach to Earth and puts on a show for hopefully all of us to go out and enjoy. Let's take a look at what you can see in the night sky for February of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. With no major meteor showers for the month of February, we jump straight to the best views of our closest neighbor, the moon, beginning with the phases of it with a full moon on February 5th, followed by a last quarter moon on the 13th, new moon on the 20th, and first quarter phase on the 27th. Whether you're visually observing the moon or trying to take some pictures of it, the best time to go out is right after sunset between the phases of the new moon and full moon. Take out a pair of binoculars or a telescope to view and image the moon between February 20th and February 27th. If you own a smartphone, try hooking it up to your telescope with an adapter to get some great video and images of the lunar surface to share with friends and family. If you're able to take any pictures of the night sky, be sure to share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. Nothing quite compares to your first view of a planet through a telescope. And let's begin this month by taking them in order, beginning with the planet Mercury. Now this is going to be a sunrise target that's going to be a difficult one to see as the month goes on. Right before sunrise in the southeast, Mercury will be at its highest point for the month, making its way lower to the horizon each day as the month goes on. Venus, on the other hand, is a beautifully bright sunset target in the southwest and continues to rise higher and higher throughout February with a close approach to Neptune on February 14th and 15th as it approaches Jupiter for some incredible views and imaging opportunities that we'll talk more about in March. Even though we're well past our close approach to Mars that happened towards the end of 2022, it's still an impressive target, especially on a clear and steady night when you can go out and get views of it at 100 or 200 times magnification. Like last month on the night of February 27th into the early morning of the 28th, watch as the Moon and Mars pass incredibly close to each other as they both set in the west. Jupiter remains a dominant planet in the west right after sunset and will have a close approach to the Moon on February 22nd. But its views will become more difficult as the month goes on Sadly, Saturn is out of view for the next month or so, as it makes its way around the Sun from the perspective of our orbit. Our two most outer planets have Uranus near the Moon on February 25th, and Neptune, as we mentioned earlier, in the west near Venus around February 15th. The main event for February, and the reason why most of you are probably here watching this video, is to figure out how you can go out to see and enjoy Comet C2022E3ZTF. We'll just call it ZTF from here on out. In what may be one of the best comets of 2023, Comet ZTF makes its close approach to Earth around February 1st. This will lead to some nice views through a telescope and binoculars, with possibly even some naked eye views of it from a dark sky location. And on this night, you can find it in the constellation Camelopardalis. From there, it moves quickly on a night-to-night -night basis, moving on to Auriga, and then Taurus by the middle of the month. Look for it to make a close pass to the star Alcab on February 8th, the planet Mars on February 10th, and the star Aldebaran on February 14th. These close encounters will be a nice opportunity to use brighter objects to find it and to take some nice images for those of you doing astrophotography. It's important to note that this will be a northern and southern hemisphere target from early February on, but ZTF will become more dim each night as it travels away from Earth. What can you expect to see from ZTF? Well, with the naked eye and from fairly dark skies, you may be able to make out a dim pinpoint of light as you track it from night to night. If you've got a pair of binoculars, you may see a blurry, fuzzy blob in the location where it'll be. And if you've got a telescope, you may even see a tail coming off of that blurry, fuzzy blob. It all just depends on if Comet ZTF underperforms or overperforms. And it's a comet, so it's really impossible to tell. Regardless of what happens with ZTF, remember how incredible it is that you're out seeing a piece of the original formation of our solar system moving 
towards our planet after having passed the sun a few weeks ago, shedding away its layers into a beautiful tail that you may be able to see with binoculars or a telescope. My first comet was hale back in 1997. And even though this isn't gonna reach anything close to those heights, I still get so excited whenever a comet travels through our part of the solar system. If you're able to get out to see or image ZTF, please let us know about that in the comments section below. And if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. We move from ZTF into the outer reaches of deep space with some of the best deep sky objects that are well beyond our own solar system. To see these objects, you're gonna need in more cases than not a six inch or larger telescope, but several on the list that I have this month can even be viewed with a pair of binoculars or the naked eye. Just know that if the moon's out of the way and if light pollution is less of a factor, you are gonna get more of an enjoyable experience viewing the objects in this part of the video. Let's begin by looking up in the southwest until we come across the constellation Auriga. It's in this region of space that we come across our first two targets this month, the Pinwheel and Starfish Clusters. These open clusters are great for binoculars and smaller telescopes, and are in a pretty busy region of space as you can see from this long exposure image I took using a DSLR in the SkyGuider Pro tracking mount. Our next two deep sky objects are easily visible to the naked eye, but reveal more faint stars and details as you work your way up to binoculars and a telescope. The Hyades is made up of stars that form a V-shape, and the amber and blue stars that showed up in this long exposure image really surprised me. Right over from it are the Seven Sisters. The Pleiades is one of the first things I remember seeing and learning about in the night sky as a kid, and even though you'll be hard pressed to see the faint nebulosity that they illuminate through a telescope, it shows up with incredible color and detail through long exposure astrophotography. I've got a video covering more deep sky objects that you can go out to see and enjoy, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. And those are just some of the best things in the night sky for the month of February. Please be sure to let us know what you hope to get out to observe or image and anything that you would add to this list in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.